Good morning, it's Bradley McAllister, Monday Methods from Spyrocraft. I hope everybody's doing well. It is uh, breezy and cool here in Georgia this morning. Uh, I don't know what it's like where you're at, but I hope it's great. Uh, good day, good day, good day. And of course I see that I didn't turn on my Spyrocraft feed over in Facebook. Let's see, Joe's here, Dwayne's here, Don's here. Good morning, everybody. Vacation in Florida, Michigan was too cold, absolutely. Uh, let me run in here and click on my, my Facebook feed so I can see it real quick. Which computer do I need to be on? There it is, it's this one over here. There we go, make that big. That'll work. Now I can see those things. I hope everybody's doing well. Uh, looking forward to today and having fun. Uh, I haven't done one of these in quite a while. A legged bowl. And uh, some of this poplar that I've had out here that's been wrapped into cellophane that's doing all the aging. Uh, like you can see here, it's got funk on it and all that good stuff. Hey, my mom's here. Art's in. Art popped it. Art, you said you weren't coming in. You said you were on vacation somewhere. But I'm glad to have you. So anyway, we got a funky piece of wood uh, right here. It's poplar, uh, nothing fancy. We'll see what happens as far as color goes inside and all that good stuff. Um, like I said, I haven't done one of these in quite a while. Let me get my watch off. And, and they're fun, uh, fun, challenging. You get to flip back and forth uh, with the piece. And there's, there's a number of ways to do them um, as far as going back and forth. So the whole concept, if you saw the picture, and I, and I know uh, Scott Hampton here, he, he sent a picture up on the wooden resin uh, group because I had said, hey, you know, I was kind of for, I couldn't, couldn't quite decide what to do today. And he popped up the idea of a leg bowl. And what Mark had, and if you haven't seen it, jump into wooden, the Monday Methods wooden resin turning community. Uh, he's got a lid on his, uh, which is a nice, a nice touch. Uh, it's a great looking piece, Scott. That was pretty cool. Hey, good morning, Mary Alice. Um, moldy oldie, yes, absolutely. Uh, so that was a, that was a nice touch, and I actually have a matching piece of wood over here, theoretically matching, uh, that I could use to make a lid for this piece if I was to make a piece like Scott did. I I started to use this piece at first, and then I noticed right in one corner, uh, it's got a split, and the corners of this are going to be where our legs are, and. So we work with this thing in the square, uh, and again, I'll pop you in the end, so you can see I haven't cut it round at all, and these corners are going to be our legs. Now, you can just barely see it in the camera there. This piece I left because it's me. This one edge is a natural edge. It's got a little uh, curve to it and whatnot, and so I decided just to leave it that way and, and, and see what I get. Uh, I always love organic edges on things a little bit. Let's see, Sue is in here. Good morning, Sue. Rich is in. Uh, good to see you folks. So, you know, there's no telling what will happen with this. Again, it's the corners. The corners make the legs. Um, you can use, a, this is a blank that I cut out of a log. I've also done these in the past with just the half, a half log. Um, that's another way to do it. And you can do it with the outside out and the outside in. There's a lot of different ways to go about this. Uh, I was going to use another picture and do another one where instead of having legs that come down, so you've got your bowl in the middle and your legs that come down and the, and the bottom is up underneath, there's another way you can do these where you have this really funky organic edge on top and the same corners would be what would be the leg, but now they're the top of the bowl and you get these natural undulations uh, all the way around the piece and they look pretty interesting too because they're fairly organic and if the piece is not perfectly square you get a more of a rectangular piece out of it so lots and lots of options uh, lots of different ways to go that's the beauty of wood turning right you can just do it any way you want you don't have to make any two the same uh, so tons of fun and again, I haven't done one of these in a while, so if you see, if I stop and scratch my head a little bit and think, well, uh, cut me, I bet I haven't made one of these in 10 years, something like that, um, which is no excuse. I'm going to have fun, and I'll work it out if I don't, what I don't remember along the way. But it has been a while. Now, this piece is not very thick. 
Uh, you can see here it's maybe oh maybe two and a half inches thick. Let's get out the crazy green tape measure and measure this. That's three inches thick. And by the time we true it up, um, it will probably be just under three. Uh, so it won't be real deep. It won't have a lot of depth to it, but hey, that's okay. The process is the same, whether it's three inches deep, six inches deep, you just have more arc in the legs and all that. Hey, my dad's in here. Good morning, dad. Uh, hope you guys are all doing well up there in North Georgia. So I put this on a face plate, just nothing fancy. You could start it out between centers, but uh, again, I, I, I'm a fan of a faceplate when I'm going to be doing weird things. Now, one thing I did do on this piece, um, and so you can see here, uh, just like a, a three-inch faceplate, um, I used only inch-long screws, okay? So I'm, I'm kind of pushing it a little bit. I didn't want to risk having the screws go into what might be the bowl and coming out the other side. So I went with a shorter screw. Um, so inch and a quarter screws, I probably have three quarters of an inch of thread holding into the wood. Now, this wood is soft, so that's, there's a little inherent risk there of, this, of the things working loose if it kind of bangs around. Uh, so that's something to keep in mind. Again, I didn't spend a lot of time doing any calculations, like zero time on calculations this morning, as to how deep the bowl might be and, and are the screws going to be too long. I just decided to err on the short side as opposed to the side of, hey, let's get an inch and a half screws in there, two inch screws, and make sure we really got a hold on this thing. Again, I'll do as much as I possibly can with the tailstock up, so between centers. So that alleviates the chance of things trying to run away on me. So I take that a little bit and um, use that as my safety valve. Hey, Michael's in here. Good morning. Um, the other thing I'm doing today different because I noticed uh, I've been wearing a new set of blue glasses. And I noticed because I run the chroma key that they kind of do weird things. So I've got on another set that were originally my plan to be my shop glasses out here, my studio glasses. But they're a little big on the face plate, on the face mask. So I may just leave the face mask on a lot today because they kind of hang up. They fit inside it fine, but they just touch in the corners, just so you know. So if I, if I just spend the day with the face mask on and it flipped up and talking to you, that's what's going on. Because these temple corners stick out just a little bit further than I had hoped. Uh, when I ordered them, but at least they're black, they're carbon fiber, and they're not going to turn into the gray wall with the fall scene on it going around on my eyes. So just, you know, so you know. Okay, let's get rolling then. So we got our piece in here. I mounted it on the faceplate, and I did test it earlier. It doesn't shake too badly. Notice I said too badly. You know, bring the tailstock up, get it in place here. And the first thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to true this piece up on both sides, uh, the top and the bottom, okay? So we'll give this just a little bit of a spin. Oh, there goes the compressor going off. Okay, now I did find that this piece is one of those that has a, has a shake or a vibration you know, up around maybe 600 or so, five or 600, I didn't really look at the numbers. We're gonna take it up past that. And the other reason we're gonna turn our speed up, uh, once again, is because we're turning a square piece of wood. So if you look here, you can see my fingers, all right? And they are inside of the corners. So we're gonna be turning wood and air and wood and air. So we want as much speed as we can safely get uh, on this piece because we're going to turn, skip, turn, skip, turn, skip, if you will, or cut, skip, cut, skip. So we want as much speed as we can get safely um, without being crazy. So we're going to turn it as fast as we can. Now the other thing uh, is that this thing is soaking wet and so it's probably going to throw water at me. But let's see what happens with our speed. So right now that's at 300 RPMs. 
And there's 500. And I don't know if you can see the, the vibration in the lathe. You probably can't from there, but if I put you in either of these views, so at 500, which would be, you know, what would be considered a nice sane uh, speed to start at, you see the vibration. Now I'm gonna leave you on, back on the end camera, and let's see if that doesn't settle down a little bit. So we popped up to about 700. Now also, remember the faces are not true, so that will help a little bit. So it's still got some vibration, uh, but not, not too bad. As things settle down here in the shop, it won't be too crazy. And so I'm letting that you know, sling any uh, water, bugs, all that stuff um, out of there. And as we get this trued up and the mass out, then we'll take that speed up more and more and more. So it looks like about, well, that's 689. So I know that that's roughly where I'm gonna go, somewhere around the 700 mark, okay? So I'll slow it back down and stop it. Again, the first thing I want to do is true up these two faces, the front and the back, just get them cleaned up. Um, use bowl gouge, use carbide tools again. I'll just jump around today because they all work. They all get us to the same place, just in a slightly different way. I don't have a bias. I love my Carter & Son tools bowl gouges. I love my Easywood tools carbide cutters. I love my Sorby tools. Um, I love them all. And I use them all. I mix it up all the time just because, all right? Um, so if you only have one or the other style tool, you're all good. I'll bounce around uh, throughout the day. I always do, that's, and that's why I do it. Okay, so let's get this thing uh, straightened up, cleaned up. And I'll clean up the, the right hand face with bowl gouge because it's easier to get to. I'll clean up the back side or left hand face with a carbide tool because it's easier to get in there with a carbide tool uh, with the headstock and all that. So that's how we'll make that decision. Okay. And doesn't really matter what I use. I've got them all hanging around here. I haven't used this Sorby tool. In, uh, this is a half inch Sorby. One of my older ones hanging around. Actually, this is a Henry Taylor, excuse me. I, I take that back, but it feels sharp. So that's what we're going to use as the workhorse. We're just going to clean it up. Um, all good. So let's get my face mask on and see how this goes. Of course, any questions along the way, pop them in the comment column. Uh, always, always good to know um, what you're wondering. So once I'm on, I'm good. I just can't pop this on and off real quick. So like I say, you may see me spend the day a lot like this um, until I get hot and sweaty, which means reminds me I'm going to turn on my fan right now. Put it on about a medium speed. Okay. All right. So let's go to the end camera right there. And I'm going to grab a sip of water and put this cord back up here where it belongs. Oh, I will. I will tell you, um, I do have. Uh, the first of the PTZ cameras coming. It's on its way. Actually, it'll be here today. Hopefully, I get it set up through the week. I'll be adding multiple PTZ cameras. I bought really, really nice ones. Uh, or I'm buying. I have one coming. And I want to get the surface controls and all that set up. And then I'll bring more in. So, the, the, all that will change. And the camera work is going to get so much better. I've been waiting for a long time to do that. Just wanted to give you a heads up about that. Okay. End camera. Do, 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 do. That looks in about the right vicinity. Turn things on, get our speed up. Run it right up to about that 675, 680. Seems to be happy. Little vibration there. Uh, what PTZ, Joe? I went with the Bird Dog brand of PTZs. And the reason being, uh, the Bird Dogs use true NDI, not NDI HX for you techies. Uh, so everything is on an, is a network feed and the bird dogs have, uh, I don't ask me why silicone is important, but they have a, a silicone chip to them for their NDI. So everything is connected over the ethernet and the network. And eventually they could be run by somebody far, far away. Um, no latency, so on and so forth. Um, pretty cool. All right, let's jump in here. 
and we're just going to kind of start to come across here and get this cleaned up see what we've got and I'm standing well out of the way So I don't know what flat will look like yet. Let's stop and take a look at what that's starting to look to see what's going on. So we can see we're, we're, we're cutting on about half of it and the other half we haven't begun to touch yet. Just for informational purposes. All right. And again, I'm in no hurry. But I don't have to make it perfect. Because we're going to end up carving most of this away. It's more a balance issue than anything else. Okay, so we're getting there. That's looking pretty good. Pretty piece of wood. I love this, this wood that I've been aging out here, if you will. And I've actually put a little bit of roll to it on that. Okay, so that side is flat. That side is flat. Good morning, Ceylon. Ceylon, tell me someday you're going to have to tell me how to pronounce your name. Um, I know I'm probably getting it wrong. I'm not good with name pronunciation, so I look at, I'm a phonetic speller, so I'm a phonetic pronouncer as well. And since we're, if you'd ever come in on Friday night or Thursday nights, uh, when I do get out here on Thursdays, we could we could have a conversation. You could tell me how to pronounce your name, and then I wouldn't feel like I was getting it wrong, which I may or may not be. But good morning, nonetheless. Sue B says, uh, "Any else lose the feeders at me?" Uh, NVM. Uh, don't know, Sue. Y'all, let me know if there's an issue at all. So you look like you are on YouTube. So I'm not sure what the shaking is there. And I can check, um, let me check in the control room and make sure everything's looking good. And check something here real quick, just to make sure. Oh uh, yeah, things show to be doing what they're supposed to be. Of course, if you're not here, you can't tell me that you aren't here. Okay, Don says he's all good. So, Sue, sometimes it just happens on, on whatever your feed is. Um, I'll, my buddy Art Miller, I don't know Art if you're still in here or not, Art has trouble, his, his feed falls away on him sometimes. Um, so I think you know, sometimes it has to do just with which, what your connection is. The internet is not a perfect place. So what I've, I've grabbed a carbide tool, Easy Wood Tools, uh, mid-size with a CI3 cutter on it. And we're gonna pop over here to the back end which you'll be able to see from back here. And when I get the new, start getting the new cameras and there will be, and I'm gonna say, there will be a camera over here eventually shining up, pointing at the back end. So we'll finally have this backside view uh, coming up. It's not here yet, but we're working on it. Okay, all right, so the best we'll do for that is overhead. And I'm gonna raise this tool rest up. So the same process. Make sure I'm in the center axis. And we're just going to clean this guy up. Yeah, uh, yeah, I know. Uh, Art's your brother-in-law. I just don't know how to pronounce your name for sure. Which makes me always feel bad. Art's name is easy to pronounce. Okay. So we're in the overhead. You should be able to see that coming. I'm on a 20 second delay there.
I chose the round tool just because it's a little more forgiving than the square one. Okay, so we're about halfway. Again, it's like the other side. Um, little, little, this one cleaned up a little bit quicker, so we're, we're all good. Well, little, one more pass. And again, there's more than one way to get where you're going on these as far as the methodology. Okay. All right, so that's got pretty colors to it. We'll leave it just like that. Okay, both sides are trued up, straightened up, all good. We're gonna come back around to the end, back here to the end. And now I have to make my decision um, is, let me pop you in the overhead. I have to decide which is going to be uh, the, the top and which is going to be the bottom, you know, where my, which way are my legs going to go. Um, okay. So I think in this case, if I make this the top, my legs will roll away. My face plate would be um, in the bottom. Whereas if I make the, where the face plate is the top, make my legs roll to my right or two towards the tailstock, then I can carve out the inside here and make the bottom of my bowl and my tenon so that I can turn it around and finish it out. Okay? So I think that being said, as I think about it, I think I'm going to make the left-hand side the top, carve my legs down to this, this corner. This corner matches theoretically all the way around. Okay, that will shape the top of the piece. Um, then we'll come in and cut away in the bottom, the back side here, and we'll make our tenon. All right, so that's where we're going to go. That's what I'm going to do. So I'm going to go back around to the other side now that I've made that decision. Spalted poplar. Yeah, there's a little spalting in it. I've got, there's a picture. I've got one, I did a big hollow form one time. Uh, of some really pretty spalted poplar. It was super cool. Um, and I wish I could get some more that looked like that. And this is getting similar. The, the, tr the thing is that when I take it, as we turn it, we lose it because all the spalting is just on the very outer edges of everything. Okay. So uh, I'm going to leave you in the overhead camera and we're going to stick with this carbide tool just because it's the easiest. I could do it with any of, I could do it with it and, and, and pull cut with the bowl gouge as well. Um, but it's easy, it's just to come in here with the carbide tool. And so I think that's what we'll do. All right. And I will occasionally, so what'll happen is I'll, I'll start working on the back side and I'll be curving and carving the legs this way until I get to this outer or the bottom, if you will, the right-hand side, and that's where I'll stop. So I'll, I'll, be, I'll work over here, and I'll, I always stand out of the way. I stand over here very, very seldom. Almost stuck my finger in there. I stand right in the way very seldom, if I don't have to. And I just step over here, I'll look, and then I'll come back. Okay? So overhead we go. And we've got a ways to go. And because of these corners, I definitely stay out of the way. And then if I get too aggressive, while well, I make the belt spin, probably put a little groove in it right there. I did. This wood is soft, as you can see. Okay. All that will get turned away as we come around. The 
The other thing to keep in mind is where do you, how big do you want your bowl inside here to be? Do you want to have a lot of, a lot of uh, surface area for decorative and then a small bowl? Do you want a big bowl? All things to kind of keep in mind and try and come up with a balance. So I'm down to, as I look now, I come over here in the overhead, and I can see the ghost image, and I have about an inch to go. And if I was to turn this off and show you in the overhead, you can see how this is cut, is coming around and rolling down. Okay, isn't that pretty? <laughs> so um, that's what I'm looking at is this, this image right here as it's going by. All right. And these will be our legs. And then as we turn the inside out, well, this will start to go away. So that's, that's where we're at. Uh, this is looking good. Looking good. We've got that natural edge right up there, so that's kind of cool. Okay, so here we go. Going to start to change the profile a little bit. Oh, let, I'm going to move the tool rest just to fuzz here now. As I've gotten getting further around the corner, I also want to see if I can pick up a little bit of speed. With no, so there we go. There's 800 RPMs. That'll make it a little bit easier not to break these corners. Okay. There's nine, about nine and a quarter. So we'll hold up right there at about nine and a quarter. Okay. And we'll come out here just on the end. And I think you, you can see this. So I'm just working out here on the corner now to roll this around. And we'll start to make the feet, if you will. Now I said in the write-up that you know this is a, a bowl that's with legs that doesn't require any carving, and that's completely true. But it is not the same as a bowl that you have carved legs on. I mean, they look. We can't control really where we put these legs in, in this particular shape. We can control the arc and the profile and all that um, in through here as much as we want, but we can't put the legs in the middle of it. All right, I kind of like this natural edge. You'll see it more later when we turn it around. Okay, Doo -doo -doo -doo. that's kind of cool right there. So I've, I've got about, uh, whew, depending, because the piece isn't perfectly square, uh, this one is down to a point. This one has about oh, a quarter, three eighths of a tip. This one has about a half an inch. So because the, per the piece is not perfectly square, this one's down to a point, um, we don't have, it's not a perfect world. We will take it down to where they're um, all at the same point, okay? And then that's where you get a, to do a little creative sanding after the fact. It's kind of funny how the set whole sanding thing, uh, uh, in, if you, in, in my take of things, used to be if you had to sand on a piece of wood and turning, well, that showed a, a lack of skill. Well, now so many pieces are carved and, and, and beautifully so that whether or not it's smooth or rough as far as needed to be sanded goes, uh, some of that has disappeared, I think, because you're, you're going to carve it uh, to a whole new profile anyhow, okay? So 
So I'll show you what I'm doing just so you can see. I'm starting to look more and more at this at the profile and the arc. You know, I've got my corner, my bottom down here, and I'm working on this arc uh, as I look kind of over towards the, the work table um, to see what the arc looks like. And then I come back and I come back in and I can reach way up in here if I want to. And I'm looking out here at this ghost image. Okay, and this is what I'm looking at. I can see the little hump right there. And I can just clean that up, that profile up. And you'll notice I'm still technically, I'm just barely leaning my face and my face shield over here in the way the rest of my body is not in the way of the piece. Should that little a corner come flying off of there or something. Okay. We stop and we take a look at what we've got and we see you know, how we're, if we're liking it and whatnot. Okay. So that, and this can be changed again um, after the fact. Once we turn around, you can change this profile. Uh, but it's nice to get it, the closer you get it to where you want it in the, in the end, the better off you are, because that way you can just work the inside uh, to that shape. Um, now another thing that we'll do, it, we can do it here in a bit, but we'll jump in and we'll decide where the um, the lip of the bowl is, and that way we can make our bowl match from the outside to the inside as we go through the process here. Okay? Alright, so a little more refining on the shape here, and then we will move along from there. Again, if you there's questions along the way out there, just holler. All right. I'm going to change things right in through here. This wood is really soft. It's, it's green, it's wet, and it's really easy to overcut. So I'm having to be really careful. Okay. All right, so if I wanted to use, let's say I didn't have carbide tools, and I wanted to do this, I can do this with my bowl gouge. We'll readjust again here just to get her. Now it is a kind of a, a, a scrape. And then I'll throw you in the overhead. All right, let me pop you into the overhead now. Okay, not too bad. It's got some wild grain in here. Has some interesting things going on. I'm just trying to decide if I'm. You know, I've got a lot of flat up here on the top, and that's okay. I got two funny lines here that you'll see. I'm just trying to decide how much how much bold do I want to put in here now, and. Um, how much decorative area do I want to leave? All right. One more pass or two. And then I'm going to stop and move my tail stock around the corner here and come all the way around with the bowl gouge.
Okay, we'll clean that up when we turn it around. So I think we'll stay right there for that. Now I do want to, I'm going to go ahead and make a decision as to uh, roughly how big I want my, my bowl area inside to be. And I'll, I'm going to make a, you know, a cut into here just for a reference point. So that as I start to work on the back side, uh, I have some idea of where my where my bowl area is. And I can do that with whatever tool I want. Because it's really kind of a reference cut. So that gives me an idea that leaves there's a feature here that you'll see there's a there's a, a like a limb piece of limb wood up in here um, and I may grab just because it's easier if you've got something that makes it easier life easier use it all right so I'm gonna grab a carbide tool just because I can reach in here from a different angle And give myself a nice a nice amount of uh, relief for my visual reference okay all right good deal so we've, we've basically shaped our top um, where we want it and there's a little split right there hopefully that won't be an issue when it dries and this piece is wet so it's going to do warpy things and then when it's all said and done you'll sand it flat on a tabletop to um, have all the legs sit even, all right? And if you want to shape and change the profile and the width of the legs, you can do all that as well. Lots of things you can do. So we're gonna come around to the, to the back side now. And start to attack that. And let's pop into the end camera. And now because I'm, it's kind of a hollowing process, um, I am going to, it's going to be easy. I can use whatever and I can take some of the bulk out with, and I, I'm going to leave the tailstock in place as long as I can. And that's also where our tenon is going to go. And so we might rough out our tenon space, our tenon point. Let's do that right now. Let's take this tailstock away. And let's work out our tendon and then we'll know exactly what we're going to do so we'll make a we'll make a two two inch tendon two inch roughly uh i think i got we're going to make it small because we don't want a big we don't want a big we want to have as much cool profile on the bottom as possible unless to get rid of so I just grabbed um, a supernova here. And I'm using my calipers to set my jaws. Okay, cool beans. Get this cleaned up. We're on end camera, yeah, okay, good deal.
That's just about right. This wood is green and soft, so I'm leaving my tenon a little oversized. All right. Just a fuzz. They were good. I'm happy with that. Okay. Now we have to remember this is the bottom of our bowl right here. So we can't get super aggressive um, in taking material away. We have to be careful. Move my controller and I can lean over here. Hopefully I won't lean into the shot. So we're making a bowl in reverse is what we're really doing. Okay, and you can quickly see how the shape starts to come into play. Let's stop it so you can see what the wood's looking like in there. Okay, so beautiful wood. Of course, the best looking wood seems like it always ends up on the bottom, right? Why is that, you know? But here's our tenon. Here's the start of our, our bowl bottom um, going in. Okay, this is the flats of our feet. And, you know, some feet are wider than others right now, and that's because the piece wasn't perfectly square. And we'll just, that's the way it is. That's okay as far as I'm concerned. Now I am going to dial up a little more speed here. And once I have this tenon area all set, I'll probably bring the tail stock back up, even, but it might get in the way. So there's some grain that runs all over the place in this. Which will make it look unique, but also makes the tool do want to do funky things. All right. All righty. Let's go ahead and finish out this tenon. Now I will switch over just because I've gotten I've gotten so used to using my carbide tool to make my tendon. It just makes it easier for reference. And I will find a square cutter. And I'll make my shoulder, then I'll come back and shorten up my tendon. Now this actually is a radius cutter, it's not really a square cutter. It's funny, I have no square cutter non-negative non rake on anything right now. So, we will come back in here with a little quarter inch gouge and we'll cut this flat. Make sure we have a nice flat shoulder. Okay, that wasn't getting square enough for me. Move my controller again.
makes my dovetail. I'm stopping to double check my length. And I should be fine even though I'm in the, I'm using a Nova Chuck. I'm using the easy wood and that's fine. So I shouldn't have a problem. So now I have my, my surface for my jaws to sit on. This is flat or concave. I have a dovetail profile in here. And I need to clean off my goggles. One of the times I'll take them off because I've got them completely covered with water, sap, etc. So I hope the feed is still working, feeding fine and coming through for everybody. There you go. Good deal. That There's a crack right there again. Hopefully that crack doesn't turn into an issue. We're doing, we should be doing good time. It's 11, 1150, so we're good there. Okay. Let's keep right on going here. Arthur Barber is for me, Tulsa. Tulsa. Arthur, good to see you. Good to see you. Uh, back to the end camera. So I start looking. Let's see what you can see. You can't see my hand in the end camera. First thing you see, I'm, I'm kind of starting to look over. Uh, here's how I can best explain it. So I, I come up here now and I look back over here. I put my fingers here on the inside and I look back. And that, you know, here's roughly where my opening is. So I just kind of get an idea of that. I don't want to let that slide in. So right in there is where the top of my bowl is at the top, right? Right about there. So from, from that cut out is the curve of the piece on the outside, and from this cut in is the bowl on the inside, okay? So we can kind of sort of work our way up there a little bit. Now, as I get more mass out of this, I'll be able to turn the speed up. Which will help me for the areas where there's wood missing. Oh, another thing I didn't mention that's really important is that you need to make sure, and I know it's hard to see, uh, I'll do it in the overhead. You need to be sure that the bottom of your bowl is shorter than your legs. Otherwise, it sits on the bowl and not the legs. So you can, and um, I, you, if I show you here in the end, so this point I'm referencing here needs to be inside of, or less than, out here on a leg, on a foot, okay? See that really uh, gnarly grain in there? It's pretty, um, but funky to cut. So anyway, make sure your bottom, don't get so far along and then all of a sudden find out. You still got four hours to turn it off? Rich, I'll be done here in 45 minutes. <laughs> I'll just turn up the wick a little bit. Um, so anyway, make sure, I've made this mistake before, that's why I'm telling you. Make sure that you don't make the bottom of your bowl stick out beyond your legs, and then you find out after the fact, and you go, well, that wasn't very smart, was it? Um, so always check that, 
you know, along the way. Okay. All right. So Rich says I got to go faster. So I will speed up the pace. Not really. I will go at the pace that I want to. But we'll pop you back in the end camera here. And I'm going to take a quick sip of water. And get back to going. I'm having a ball. I said I haven't done one of these in a long time. Good, good fun. Rich, I actually went looking for your manzanita root burl um, yesterday to put it, use it as a project, but I don't know where I put it at the moment. Oh, you just want entertainment until it's time to go home. You mean, you mean they're not making you work hard at work? You don't you have some engineering to do? But now, in all seriousness, Rich, I, I was looking for the manzanita root burl. I came across it in a picture um, when I was looking through photos, working on an idea, you know, what, for an idea. And I said, where's, where's that piece that Rich sent me? And then I can't find it right now, which is not hard to believe. Um, the more time you watch me work, the more you know that it's not hard for me to misplace something. So I figure it will show up in due time. Another thing that's really important I want to mention, so as I'm starting to work here, and I'm working around this corner, right in here, it's very easy, if you can see my hand, and I'll pop you in the overhead here. Um, so I'm holding the tool like so, and I'm you know, taking material away, it's, and I have a habit of, of laying my hand, my little finger in the, in the end of my hand, right on the tool rest there. It's very easy to let that drift over, and if it drifts over and catches, one of these legs comes by, it catches it like that, it really bleeds a lot, at least I do. Um, so that's something that's really important that you want to keep in mind. Make sure your hand doesn't drift over that tool rest, because it will, it will leave a mark. I have been to the movie uh, more than I want to admit, okay? So... I'm going to take a little bit more. I'm going to keep working back and forth. I'm going to work on this bowl section. And then I'm going to dial the speed up um, pretty good and work on cutting these legs down to their final uh, thickness, if you will. Now, I do have one concern, and I've been talking about it. I have this split right here. There's a little crack in this piece. Okay, and that could compromise my leg. Um, and if it does, then the piece could come apart. And I'm going to dial the speed up when I cut these legs, finish the, make the final cuts in here. And I, so I, I'm going to do what I'm going to do. I'm going to cut them anyway, but, but I, I'm aware and I'm cognizant that I have this split here. Um, I'm not going to pour CA glue in it and stuff like that. The wood is soaking wet. Probably really wouldn't glue it anyway. Uh, so I will be listening. And I talk about this a lot. This is why I don't play music when I'm turning. I love my music, uh, but I, and this is one of these things I preach. I, I like things to be quiet because I want to hear uh, the pitch of the wood as the tool is cutting it. And if that pitch all of a sudden starts to change in a way that doesn't sound uh, typical, if I get an atypical sound, that tells me that maybe that, that point that I am aware of, that place that I'm aware of, is starting to come loose. And then if you start to hear a certain type of tick, it's time to step back, turn off the speed, and reevaluate. So always be aware of so something like this when it starts to show up in the piece. It's pure about safety. You don't want to get hurt. So yeah, you're wearing a face shield. You could wear a football helmet. But if that piece comes off and hits you over here in the arm on the bounce and the ricochet, uh, it's going to hurt. It's going to scratch you. It's going to cut you. Who knows what it's going to do? So always be aware of these things. It's, it's not worth the piece. So stay aware. Don't wear earbuds with the tunes playing and all that stuff. That's my opinion. You do as you see fit. Um, I, I have saved myself many a time 
when I heard something go or something go pop or click and then all of a sudden you realize you're just about to get in trouble all right so cavaliers I may appear hey that came out good uh, I am very aware and try to stay aware of these type of things okay all right enough talking because they say I talk too much back to the end camera fire this guy up a little more material a little more mass out of our bowl shape here And I just kind of reach over with my other hand there in the top and go, okay, that's not bad. So that's, you know, that's a reasonable little shape of a size of a bowl down in there for a decorative piece. Okay, this tenon will be used, but then it'll be taken away, and we can round that off uh, all over once we're all said and done with it. Okay. Um, so I haven't done this with a carbide tool for any of you carbide tool owners. So let me let me switch gears here for a minute, as I said that I would, and I always do mean to. So we're going to do what we're doing here uh, with carbide tool. Nothing really changes. We'll just use it to take some of this material out right in here. Beauty of the carbide tool is you can just work back and forth. I don't want to get too thin. I don't want to get too thin up in here yet. I want to keep some structure um, because if I make this area in here thinner than where I'm working out here, which right now there's it's just about 50-50. That's a little thick right in here. Um, I can get flex up in this area, which will make things harder for me as I cut my legs. Okay. All right. So that's pretty close. That's pretty close to what I want for the, uh, my bowl shape there. Just generally uh, kind of feeling the outside is bigger than the inside. That's important that we have that as a, as a factor. So now it's time to go ahead and dial the speed up and let's cut these legs. Um, and so this looks like it's about, oh, a fat, strong 3 eighths. We're going to cut that in half. Okay. And we're going to mirror the outside and pop you into overhead here we're going to mirror the outside is going to mirror the inside and we're going to bring this around together all right now we could always come back and change this outside still if we wanted to i'm not going to uh, i'm just going to kind of leave it like it is i don't really want to take away any more wood from up here than i have to because the, what character it has is in that upper layer even though a lot of it's gone um so we're just going to make these two sides match now and take half of this width away and like i say when it dries it'll warp um, and then you'll be you know like right now you can see this this foot is is noticeably wider than that foot right there okay and then you can you can just blend these to uh, change that arc and make them uh, match up or leave them natural if you want to uh, whatever suits your fancy all right he says, all right, time to dial up the speed. Now, make, I'm going to try and make sure that I don't lean in over the camera on you. Trying to find my best tool rest angle. This is when I wish I had a shorter tool rest hanging around. Handy, he says. 
Uh, I don't see one handy, so we'll just deal. Okay. Now, the other thing that I've done, um, I grabbed my little quarter inch, little quarter inch tool that I love so much, kind of my quarter inch bottom feeder, and I, I freshened it up, and I changed the angle on it just a little bit. I was just kind of in a hurry, but I want a piece, a, a, a tool that will let me come right around that corner nicely. So I'm going to see if this will do what I want because uh, I get nice control out of it. I like it a lot when it when it's doing what I want it to. All right. I'm going to move my controller up. You didn't see that, but I'm moving my controller up on the lathe. If if you don't have a magnetic controller, well, it's not the end of the world. But by golly, they sure are handy because you can put this thing wherever you want it out of the way or right where you can get to it. Um, my problem is you know, I often lean up against it and I turn things off, so I put it up on top here. Uh, they're super handy. You can convert your lathe over to that and all that good stuff. All right, so let's dial this guy up. I'll put you back in the end camera. Fire that up. We're at, we're at right at 1,000 now. Let's see. She starts to shake up there, so we don't like that. About 1,200 That's where we're landing here. Okay, we're at about 1,200. Hopefully I don't get my shoulder in the way. And I'm gonna work in stages. And so I just stopped right here, and you can see that where that cut stops is right at the opening, okay? And that's a good reference, at least it's the opening there, it's not opening here, but that's a nice reference. And I want to cut these legs down in stages. Um, I want to take the first inch and a half or so, no different than making a really thin uh, walled bowl. Work your way down in stages and make that match and then take the next section out. That leaves you more material back in the backside here for support um, as the stuff starts to move. And then once you've got your final thickness, you don't have to come back, okay? Beautiful spalting back in here. Too bad it's on the bottom and nobody will ever see it. Okay, so my little bottom feeder tool is cutting great. Um, and then when I come around the corner, it should, be, it should do what I want it to as well. It's nice and fresh and it's a nice small light cut. Because I'm starting right in on the edge of the piece. And I'm going to pop you in the overhead. I'm almost to the thickness I want, but I want you to see what the cut looks like from overhead. Because we're cutting out here where there's wood and no wood. So you can see that this is where the tool starts to make contact. Clear that out down there. Okay, so we're we're cutting wood and air and we're looking at a ghost image. All right, and this is where we start to cut. So we have to be careful because this is quite getting quite thin. And so I know that you can't see it, but what I was doing on the last section of that cut is I was actually standing here and I was looking down both sides uh, of this cut. I'm trying to see if that camera won't show. Anyway, I was looking at the inside and the outside as I was cutting. So I was cutting on the inside, I was watching the outside and since it's spinning around, I can see the tool so if I hold the tool there carefully, I was watching here as I was cutting. Oop, let me change camera. So as the tool was it was cutting here, I was watching on the outside 
so that I can look at that thickness and I can see that wall thickness happen right there. Okay? And so now when we take you back to the end camera, you can see that we have a nice uh, thin, appropriately uh, thickness legs, if you will. Okay? And so that's that first cut, that first stage. And we'll leave that alone now. And we'll continue on around the corner. Alrighty? Alright. I'm happy. I'm happy we're all happy. Good deal. So now I can actually save my, my super fresh sharp cutter there. And let's say I could come in with a bowl gouge. And take some more of this away. As a workhorse. And save that other tool. Because we want it to be making the best cut we can. Alright, so that did, that's pretty good. Alright. So now we can use our, our last little fine tool to make the finish cut on that. And there we go. And again, I'm looking, the tool is on the inside. And I'm looking to the outside uh, as I make the cut. So I wish I could, I wish I could reach over and do this. So as I make the cuts now, the tool is here and I'll be looking over the top here to see that, that thickness, okay? And so let's leave the tool here for a moment, or the camera there. Start to pick up the cut. Okay, now I'll switch you over to the end camera. I'll stop and check, check my work, make sure I'm not too thin. And I'm just about right where I want to be. I do have a, you can see, where can you see this? Okay, you can see the tool mark, you see the line where I started again. So that's where I'm picking up the cut from, is right there on that line. Okay. And I'm watching, I can look over here and see the cut line. I can't see it from here because I'm standing too far out of the way anyway. So I can watch over here on the opposite side and see where my tool picks up the cut. There we go. And that real short nose allows me to just to roll right around that corner um, with the tool. That uh, Again, it's really a traditional grind on there, okay? And so that's working out really well. There's a little hump on the outside on the front edge. Um, you know, the Sandman could take care of that, okay? Now it's a matter of connecting the dots between here and here, just this last little section, all right? Our legs are done for all intent and purpose. Um, we've got about two inches of leg cut there. Pretty piece of wood. Like I say, it's a it's classic that the bottom is prettier, even though it's not very far away, the, the bottom is prettier than the top, but sometimes you get that. Well, 15. Okay. So, I can keep working with this tool. I can go to carbide, but I like the cut that I'm getting there. So, I think I'll just stay with this little guy. Try and keep out of your way. And we'll just begin to blend this together. Okay. And we just gently blend those two points together on the inside. And we can leave 
we can leave a little extra material right in here if we want, just for some strength. Okay, and there's nothing wrong with that. Or I could take more out of it. Just depends on what I want to do. Um, I could come in a little bit tighter here and then roll this around, and maybe I will. Um, or we could leave a nice, a nice arc underneath because you can see down in through the sides here. Uh, let me pop you in the overhead. When the piece is sitting on a table, you can see down through here. I know this camera is kind of at a funny angle. So you want, you want a nice profile and you want this all nice and smooth and a nice transition where you can't quite see there. But if I pop you back here, this transition area right in here, you want that to be really nice because you're seeing through these windows, uh, these windows here on the side of the piece, right? This is, get that fungus off of there. This is the window into the, into the side of the piece. So um, you want this to look as nice as it can. All right, back in here to the bottom. A little bit more. I think we'll take just a little bit more out of that. And I need to move my tool rest just a fuzz so that I can get a little bit more approach. I need a little bit more runway, if you will. Now, one thing about this the small quarter inch tool, I can't reach real far over the tool rest. Here I'm two inches over the tool rest, um, and I'll start to get flexed. So I do have to keep that in mind. Okay. So we clean this up real nice now, because it's still nice and solid on the inside. And I have the heel ground away on this as well. I know you can't quite see it, but the heel has been ground away there too, so it doesn't drag. Now there's some funky grain right there. This, this section of grain right here is soft, um, and it's making the tool want to do funny things. Okay, but we're just cleaning this up and just making this nice transition um, through there. We're trying to alleviate any unnecessary sanding, but hey, if you can't quite get where you want to be and you have to clean it up with the sandpaper, well, that's not the end of the world. You could come in with a scraper, a bowl scraper, and clean this up. You'll lift the grain up though if you do. And this weird, this piece of wood, this end grain is lifting right here, just in that one section. So this is all end grain. This is just one little band that's lifting uh, in the cut. Not anywhere else going around. It's kind of strange, you know? You, you, who knows why, okay? And we can come over here and just do a little more cleanup and I always check this before you turn it now because if I break my foot off of here now, I'm going to be really mad. I'm going to lower that tool wrist just a fuzz. Like I said, this thing is green, so it'll warp and do funny things, and then you'll sand those legs flat, and it'll be cool. I should get around to finishing this in four or five years. There's that funny grain. So I'm going to try something here just for fun. I'm going to switch tools to bigger tools I'm reaching so far. Let's see if this makes a difference or not. Tool's still a little high. I'm just trying to get a little bit nicer cut. I'm not, I'm not happy. I'm not 
super satisfied yet. Let's see if I can make myself satisfied. It's got this funny grain. It just wants to... That soft spot makes the tool want to bounce. And I was thinking that maybe a little bit a uh, bigger tool would take that away. Okay. But it didn't really do anything more for me than what I was getting. One more thing we can try here. Let's try one more thing, see if we can get in here. Let's see if we can come in this way. My banjo will move far enough, and I can use my little small tool, have nothing hit, and get a cut that I'm happy with. I may or may not. All we can do is try. I also have to be careful to keep my hand out of the leg. So that's much better on the on the body. This section now from here to here, that was much a much better cut. That's really nice and smooth. Now I've got this little transition up here. I have to deal with, but I'm much happier with that section right there. So if I can come around the corner here and blend that in without too much issue, then I will consider myself happy and we'll move along. Okay, I'm happy. I can live with that. They say I can live with that. Okay, so that's pretty cool. Again, you can see I got a little bit of transition issue right in here. Um, I'm not going to spend all day chasing it. I know that that would sand out pretty easy. My legs are nice. I'm happy with my legs. Okay, I pop you in the overhead. Get the chips out of the way. You can see as we look through the windows. Again, the camera's not directly overhead today on this. All right, so very cool. It's doing exactly what I want. All right, so now all we have to do, and if I was to take a straight edge, if I had a straight edge, where would I be? I saw you, I saw you earlier. Hang on a second, I'll see if I can't show you this, unless I was over in the other building. Well, maybe we can use this. Any straight edge in the store in the, will work. And you can't quite see it, but I'll pop it in here. So all I'm doing is, is double checking, you know, that, that my base is less than my legs. And so there, I'll pop you back into overhead. You can see that I've, I'm clearing uh, nicely okay so I don't have to worry about that my legs my bowl bottom and and we can carve that away uh, as we go after the fact oh and there's my straight edge it was about to bite me if it was a snake okay so let's pop the face shield off for a minute and get a little fresh air and blood to the head it really is a comfortable face shield and they're you know, like 25 bucks on Spirecraft um, and we're going to go ahead and take this off the faceplate now, turn it around, put it in the chuck, take out the inside of our bowl. There we go. So it's coming out pretty cool. All right, there's, gives you an idea of what's going on there from the first time you've been able to see it. 
um, you know, in rotate at different angles. So that's that's what we've been building. And again, it's got you know it's poplar, so it's got the green stripe, and then it's got vaulted wood, and this this is where this this uh, sapwood and out here has it's got the the softness to it. Anyway, let's get this thing turned around and put in a chuck. We'll take the inside out because I want to make Rich have to go back to work by one o'clock. So, Rich, if you're here, I thought the Harley was yours. And your social post said there or comment in mind that that belongs to the wife. Something about no license yet. What's the deal? Hey, who says I can't have a personal conversation in the middle of a live stream, right? We're all friends here. Rich Bulduke is with Nova Technotool. He's an engineer down there. He's a real good guy. Work, what's that? Um, that's something that some of us used to do. Technically, it's both got it. We're both paying for it. Yeah, but is anybody riding it? That's my question. I'm the only one with a license. Gotcha. Okay, we pop that guy in there. Make sure everything sits just right. Looks good. Um, in the overhead, the overhead is kind of far over, um, but you can, yeah, you can't quite see. So much for the overhead today. When the new camera gets hooked up, and then I can, uh, that one of them anyway, that'll just be a punch of a button to change it. I'm looking forward to, it's kind of funny. Every time you make an upgrade, right? You buy a new piece of equipment, it requires, it requires a whole other set of technology to control the silly thing. Um, but I seem to like, I, I like making this stuff work and having fun with it. I'm gonna get her a lighter, lighter bike. Would she be happy with an Iron 883? It's light, doesn't have that much power, but it doesn't weigh a ton. You can get them for almost a song now, especially if you get a used one. Now that, some of you have no idea what I'm talking about. When I'm talking to Rich, there was a bike that I looked at on s Friday. Uh, it's a Street Bob. And it was a 21, it was used. And it was still like $17,000 or something like that. So I'm just letting that squeeze in on those and compress those fibers, those green fibers. All right. So now we're in our overhead and all we're going to need to really see is this end shot here. All right. And there's the, there's the pretty top of this. We've got this crazy grain over here. And then we've got these two little, this one, there's a knot right there and that's a limb. So um, we get that feature. Now right here, and I can show you in the overhead, we survived our split. It's still there. All right. And it may open up or it may close up when it dries, but we didn't break it. So that's good. This punky grain really wanted to tear out right in here. Um, and so, so be it. So let's go to the uh, end camera. Well, that sounds nice, Ridge.
Okay, so we're going to take and make our, all we have left really to do is, is turn away the inside of our bowl here. Okay? And I've got 30 minutes to do that. Pop the face shield back on. Get set to jet. Again, any of the tools, bowl gouges, um, carbide tools, they're all, all fair game, any and all. Um, I could even grab the Henry Taylor that I didn't use before that I said I was going to. I just want to move some wood really fast. A little bit bigger tool. Now, I did turn this around, so I'm going to turn the speed all the way down. Turn it on. Now, it doesn't run perfectly true, because probably when I can, the limb, the, the legs out here, they moved, and we expected that, and it's a little out of wonk, uh, because the top has moved, but it's sitting pretty good in the chuck, so we're just going to go with that. And we'll still take her up back up to about a thousand or so. Let's start to take the middle out of this guy. However you want to go about it, or do you want to drill from the inside out? I cut from the outside in, as far as I'm concerned, it's personal preference. So there's that limb, which makes the cutting kind of hard. Uh, it might make a nice feature in the side, inside the bowl. And there, here's where the limb goes through here, and here's where the limb comes through here. So kind of interesting aspect. And again, if you just want to drill down the middle first and have somewhere to go, sometimes it's actually easier. Okay. Uh, if you're in the carbide world, we need to raise up our tailstock or tool rest. If you have carbide tools and you're not running high-speed steel, well, same thing applies. So I'm just taking a little bit of the mass out of here, and then we'll work on our wall thickness. Again, if you're using carbide and you want to drill down in the middle first and then have somewhere to work to, well, you can do that. Okay. All right, so we've got the bulk of it out of there real quick. Now we just want to make sure we, we um, make our profile match. So now it's time to get serious. And 
I want to establish my upper uh, diameter, oh, pretty knot right there, and profile. And I can round this over. I can leave a harsh edge in here. I can leave a sharp edge. Um, you could put a recurve in here if you wanted to hold this um, to take the tenon away or just have a, another uh, aspect to it. You could roll that edge over. I didn't. Um, this one kind of wants it. My eye tells me I want to have this piece roll into the into the bowl. So I'm going to come out here a little bit further and just kind of ease this corner away so that it's just it just rolls over like a sand dune. Interesting analogy of sand dune, but hey. Okay. So I just kind of soften that transition there. All right. Again, uh, a carbide tool, uh, if you're there, they're fine for this kind of making these nice radiuses. All right, it does lift the grain, so that's pretty cool. And I like this because it gives more, it shows more of the wood there. Okay, let's see what my, how my little guy who's sharpened, I can resharp, I may resharpen this. Let me freshen this one up real quick here. Because I have been working, and I want it nice and, and sharp. And everything was in place. So let's see if we can clean this up. A little high on the tool rest there. Let's lower that guy down. Nice, fresh, sharp tool does wonders. Okay, so I'm just checking this thickness, uh, pop you an overhead here, as I, as I work through this corner, I'm, I'm just feeling through here, oh, which way you can see it, if you can see it the best, I didn't hear, so I'm just feeling that transition as it rolls right along there, and keeping this uniform, that's my whole goal right here, and that's doing pretty well, because we keep it uniform, it will dry evenly, and life will be good. Just fuzz here. And again, what's happened is this is really, really soft wood. I mean, the poplar's kind of soft by nature and being green. This is really soft. Um, and this is harder. And the tool tries to bounce, and especially with this limb in here, it really makes it kind of crazy. Now, it would really be nice to come and run out here with the tool and see if I could clean that up. But let me show you what happens here. Oh, yeah, there we go, in the overhead. You can see just how soft this is and flexible now. So to, to try and cut on this, try and put a tool against this and cut when the tool presses on it. You can see that flex. So if you're trying to cut with a tool, and you're pushing, the whole piece is just going to flex away. Okay? So you're not you're going to have a hard, hard time getting that to cut. All right? Um, especially that that section is the is the is the weakest. This one right here. So that's something to be aware of. So we can't go down through there. We're just going to have to sand that clean when the time comes. That's just part of life today. All right, let's look over the top.
You know, keep checking this because the last thing we want to do is make a donut after an hour and a half of having fun with this. Okay, so that inside transition is all nice now. And because I rolled my tool rest inside the, the profile, um, I'm not having to reach super far with my little teeny tool over the top. All right. And, boy, I'm just about where I want to be. Maybe just another little passer through at the bottom. I like to leave a little extra in the bottom there because when I go to take that tenon off, I want to make sure I don't run out of wood. Let's see if we can't make maybe one nice cut down through here. It's starting to move. Hopefully my arms, not my shoulder, and my head's not in the way. All right. Well, that's just about. I like the profile. It just rolls down in there nicely. By golly, I think I'm I'm happy ahead of time. So there we're on the end. Uh, that's what you're seeing. We've got a nice little feature here. We've got that little knot limb, and we've got this limb. Uh, we got some mildew there. It finally showed up. But this, this curve is nice. This is a nice transition down into the piece. And I'll pop up here and we'll take it out of the chuck because we're done turning on this guy. Ow. Watch that crack and see how it grows. Yeah. So that's pretty cool. Again, I'm not sure how it's showing. I'm seeing it in a monitor. Um, I have to wait for it to pop up there in the delay. But it's, it's a nice, nice little transfer in there. And I'll, you can see the profile like so. That gives you an idea. And then I'll, I'll jump to the, in, the closer cameras as well. All right, and in this whole section here, where you take the tenon off, you can round that over. Um, depending on how much material you took out of the inside here, that's why you want to be, you want to be, uh, oh, that final cut. Yeah, I'm not cutting anymore. I'm, I'm done cutting on this guy, because uh, otherwise we'll break it. Um, so anyway, this, this bottom, let me pop to the overhead here. This, this bottom profile here can be, uh, once the tenon comes off, this can be rolled over. Um, I took I took a little bit more out of it than I probably wanted to or should have to change that a lot. A big bag of M and M's, yeah, that'd be cool, Joe. Um, so you can see there's you know there's a few tool marks in there, but uh, not too bad. Again, the profile is pretty cool. They're fun, and I'm zoomed in pretty tight with the overhead camera. And I get that. Let me see if I can get this chuck off of here real quick. Stuff a little more room. I'm going to tout my, my new camera's coming that I would be able to, to zoom the camera right out. Pretty easy. All right. And if I show you from the end camera, you get another little shot at it. Show you this way, like down, and so so it sits it sits on whatever, 
Um, they're fun, and it wasn't really hard. Once, once you kind of get your head around, you know, the, the shape and the profile and the idea, um, and you can, again, you can have them go, the grain go arc with the piece or against it, depending on which way you lay out your, your block to start with, your, your, your blank. Um, lots of different things. Uh, the longer, the thicker the blank is, the longer the legs can be. Uh, this piece, again, was, uh, it was about a half an inch, maybe a little less than a half an inch out of square. So how do I remove the tenon, Bob says? Uh, Bob, that's, that's a good question, and it's actually quite easy. What I would do is I would put a chuck back on the lathe. After it dries, after it dries, I would, I would put it back in a chuck, and I would sand everything that I could sand. I would just let the chuck be my holder. Um, or you could get a pro mount. How's that for a plug? Um, the Woodcut Tools Pro Mount the Spirecraft carries, and you can sand this on your bench because you can mount a chuck in it and hold it. Um, cool deal. As you know, I've been pushing those, or so we've got them. Uh, so anyway, try not to do sales pitches on Monday Methods. I would... Grab something, I could use a piece of wood, or I could use a rubber chucky. So I have one that'll grow in this chuck. This is a urethane. Rubber chucky is gonna show the, it's green, so it's gonna look weird. Pop you into here. And it won't quite go in. There it goes, in that chuck. Just goes in there. All right, so um, that's in the end. All right. We can tail stock. I'm going to set this out of the way so I don't break it. There's, I mean, you could use a vacuum, uh, Chuck, Bob, to answer your question. There's, there's more than one way to do it. This is the poor man's way. You could hold it in a vacuum, Chuck. This is the poor, easy way. And I'll let you see from the front as I do this. So that goes inside. It's not a jam chuck. Jam chuck would be a, a fit, a pressed fit. And the one thing I didn't do is typically I'll make a center mark right here in the middle of the tendon. I didn't do that on this one. But we slide the piece right up on the chuck. And then had I made a center mark, I would bring my tail stock up to said center mark. And we'll just pretend like I, I hit that pretty close to, by golly, I did hit it right on center. Okay. And with this tail stock in place, I would carve away the tenon which you can just barely see in the other overhead camera, down to a little teeny cone. So if I show you here, imagine carving this tendon in, in, in. I'll pop back over here, uh, till you made just a little teeny cone. Little teeny cone, little teeny. I mean, down to like a pencil tip and the size of a pencil, maybe uh, three quarters of an inch up at the biggest end. Carve that down to a little cone and then stop and you cut that off with a chisel. And then you stand it up, and that's all there is to it. So you would just be right in here uh, with the tool, uh, whatever your tool of choice would be. Right in here with the tool rest and a tool, and you would just carve this away across the bottom. And then at the same time, you could reshape, you could reprofile this corner right here and make your little cone Again, maybe half, three quarters of an inch at the top, down to the tip of a pencil, depending on the strength of the wood, um, take it off the lathe, and just cut that with a chisel. Don't sand it, just take a chisel and cut it, and then you can hand sand it, and you'd be off and running. Uh, so it's super easy, super easy. Well, I hope you guys enjoyed that. I had a lot of fun. These are fun, like I said, it's been 10 years, I think, since I've made one. Um, Maybe less than that, but I don't remember making one in a long time. But they're not, they're really not hard. They are a, a, a bit of a test with your skills. 
Uh, making the thin legs is great uh, practice with your tool control. If, if you might go to make one of the first of these and you break it, don't feel bad. Um, that's, that's just part of it. That's the learning curve. So uh, they're not hard, but they are more difficult than just making your everyday basic bowl because you have more things to, to contend with. And if you've never turned uh, where you've got the open space, where you've got wood, no wood, wood, no wood, that takes a little getting used to. Most of it's up here. Uh, if you make oval bowls, make rectangular oval bowls, uh, you just have to think that it's solid in your head and then you're pretty good to go. Um, so a lot, that part is psychological, but there, there is also, I have to say, there's some tool control there because that tool is cutting and missing and cutting and missing and cutting and missing. And hence, that's why I dialed the speed up to, in this case, I went to about 1200 and I started to vibrate. Um, the faster it can spin when you're cutting and missing, cutting and missing, the easier it's going to be for the tool to not wander in that, that free zone. All right. Now, the flip side of that, and it's, it's real, is that the faster it's going, when one of these legs breaks, like where I have the split right here, if that broke, that piece is going to be a serious projectile uh, when it comes off. So there's a balance in there uh, of how fast you're willing to turn it to get what quality of cut uh, and trade off for your safety with your safety gear that you're wearing. Uh, because the last thing we want to do is get hurt. You can always sand it if you have to. If you can't get the cut you want, stop before you break it or get hurt and get a beer and sand that guy and you'll be all good. And the next time you work on your tool control more. Great practice for tool control doing these. And it doesn't take a big piece of wood. This was like 11 inches plot, roughly square, 10, 11 inches. So not a big wood. Um, great fun. Great fun. I'm glad you guys enjoyed it. I had fun doing it. Uh, looks like people, uh, I'm looking at the comments here. And I thank everybody for all the nice comments. That's great. Uh, I have a ball doing this. And I'm always happy to share uh, what I know and... You know, I, I taught myself, uh, not that I haven't uh, watched and learned from other turners, but most of it is time spent. You know, my dad's in here, you can ask him. I would turn all day long, every day, um, when I was selling the art and craft shows and the gallery things. And just one after another, after another, after another, you know, thousand pieces a year, plus or minus. Um, just spend time. And when you bust one, well, I used to just give it to my dad and he'd glue it back together and try and fix it. Um, but you know, just the practice, have, have a good time with it, and it's great. Let's see, it's questions, uh, enjoy the old film star retired, learned a lot from you. Absolutely. Yeah, my pleasure. Um, I, I always have fun. Um, uh, P Peter North it is. Yes, thank you. I, I have a ball. Like I say, I get out here uh, on Mondays. I'm, I'm dragging out because it was 11.54. I'd like to give you all your, your free money's worth here to right up till t uh, 1 o'clock. Uh, I, I have a ball doing this. If you have questions, always feel free to contact me, Spirecraft. Um, info or contact at Spirecraft. Bradley at Spirecraft. Um, you can go to Spirecraft's Facebook page and message me. Um, I'll gladly uh, respond and reply and answer. Um, Thursday nights... Um, most Thursday nights, I haven't been out here every Thursday night. Uh, it's been it's been a busier uh, winter than I expected. Thursday nights, I come back out here and I do a live video chat with anybody who's in the wood and resin turning group. If you don't know what that is, Spirecraft Monday Methods Wood and Resin Turning private group on Facebook. Come up, pop over there, you know, look for it, pop in there, ask to join it, we'll let you in. And then on Thursday night, I post the link. Um, because it is a private group, we don't want the world. Uh, pop in here, and I'll be back out here in the studio, right here, um, in a Google Meet, Zoom-style meeting, and we can talk about this or anything else uh, that you might have on your mind. It's about an hour long. Uh, I'm usually out here, so uh, it's great fun, and I'm happy to do it, because that's what I'm here for, is to share information and uh, inspire you to, to try new things. All right? All right. Well, I think it's time for me to go find some lunch. It's Monday, and now I'm hungry. And it's 1 o'clock. So, everybody, thank you very much. I look forward to seeing you next week and maybe Thursday night if you pop in here. 
I uh, don't know what I'll be doing next Thursday. Hopefully I'll have one of the new cameras all hooked up and we'll be playing with it. We'll see. Uh, if it's not hooked up, I'll show it to you. I'm not sure what all I have to do to get it all hooked up. But I will see you all next week on Monday Methods. Thank you everybody for coming out and have a great week and get ready for spring. See you now. I'm gonna leave you in I'm gonna leave you in the end shot, I think, because the overhead just doesn't show much. So I'll show you that right there. Okay, alrighty guys. Thank you so much.